off-grid stores here back and in this video we're going to be talking about connecting panels in series versus parallel what should you do and how do you do it so first off the main difference or the main reason why you would want to be going in series versus parallel is mainly just to fit the qualifications of whatever you are trying to plug into let's just say we're going to be using this delta max down here as an example the delta max can take 100 volts at its high end and 13 amps at its high end of amperage so if you look at your panels right here we have a 100 watt rich solar panel you always want to go with the voc the open circuit voltage to do your math and it's 22.8 volts you always want to use the short circuit current for your math for the current and that's 5.78 so if you wire everything in series, when you wire things in series, you are adding up voltages. So 22.8, 22.8, 22.8, 22.8. Altogether, that's about 90 something, I believe 91.2. Check my math if you want, just did it off my head. But you will be keeping the same current across the board. So say this, has a max voltage of 100 you want to put four in series you can actually do it these panels have changed the 100 watt panels used to have a higher open circuit voltage where if you did want to put four in series it would have been over 100 and you couldn't do them all in series but how do you wire something in series first i will show you so it's super simple just because there's better light on this one i'll show you each panel is going to have a negative and a positive lead coming off of the panel the negative lead will always be the female connector and the positive lead will always be the male connector will also always have the little red o-ring on it so pretty much when you're wiring something in series all you want to do is right here you want to go positive to negative positive to negative positive to negative and then you have the two ends which will be a negative and then a positive down there and that's what you would plug in to your delta or whatever you're going to be doing your solar charge controller whatever type of system you are running so it's super simple i'll show one by hand and then we can just do the rest i'll put it down and do the rest so we got the positive lead right here the negative lead of this one and I'll show you that even with one hand oh we got it we got it all you have to do is so you hear that little click once you hear the click you know it's in you can see that the little prongs have gone all the way in kind of like a backpack and you're good to go so as you can see these two are connected they do, they are pretty long on these panels, so you could tie them back up once you put them down, zip tie, however you want to go about it. Then we'll move on to the next one. So I'm going to put it down and then we can go through it. So as you can see, we have them all pretty much daisy chained together, more or less. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. At the end here, we have a positive. At the end here we have a negative so all you would do is for the negative you would take this cable and you would plug it in here again it's pretty impossible to mess up because this is a female connector this is a male connector black is always negative so you plug that in there and at the other side this is the female side it's red red is always positive you plug it in right there you plug those in together and then you just plug that into the back of your Delta Max or whatever you have. So effectively, this system would not reach the limits of the Delta Max because it's under 100 volts and it's under 13 amps. The amps will stay the same in a series configuration. But say you had five panels here, that would be over 100. Five times 22.8 is gonna be over 100. So you would not be able to do it you'd overload the Delta Max, it can't take it. So say that you had six panels or whatever, you wouldn't be able to do it. 
but this configuration you actually can do it i don't have a fit um rigid panel right now for demonstration but that's basically that so now i'm going to show you so say your charge controller can only take 80 volts then you know you can't do this configuration whatever it is if it's below if the what it's allowed to take is below what this system is providing remember in series you're always just adding things together you always want to go for as much in series as possible but when you're doing parallel you need to make sure that you keep equal amounts on each side so if you're doing parallel you don't want to do say it's four panels you don't want to do three and then one in parallel it doesn't work you don't want to do that so this configuration is in fact okay but let's just say it was too much or say you don't want to be close to the limit then we can configure it in another way and that would be with parallel so i'm going to disconnect all these and i'll show you how to wire in parallel and what happens when you wire things in parallel so effectively what happens when you wire things in parallel is that you're going to need for smaller systems something like this or basically two of the same positive or negative is going to go in here and then one will come out this side when you wire things together in parallel you're going to be adding together the currents so like i said if you want to keep equal things together on a parallel system we're going to do two in series first off so it's going to add together the two voltages and then we're going to put those two series strings in parallel together so if we put these two in series then we're going to have 22.8 times 2 it's going to be around 45 ish and then we're going to have the same thing over here and then when we put these all in parallel together we're going to double the actual current still going to be the same amount of power but it's just a better way to can it's just another way to configure i wouldn't say better it's only better if your system can't take everything being in series together if there was six panels and you try to do six in a row in series you won't be able to do it but if you do three in series three in series and put them in parallel you would be able to do it with the delta max and the same thing is the delta max can take 800 watts if you had four and then four you can put four in series four in series and then put those two in parallel so i'm going to show you what that means so as you can see these two are in series right here we got the positive to the negative now we have a positive here and a negative here right here we have this one parallel connector it has two of the same female connections on the one side so we need to put a male in there and then we have a male on this side so what we do is we take the positive of this string plug it into here make sure everything's good and now we come over to this string this is where the leads need to be longer thank god they're three feet each and we plug them together like this and now we do the same on the other side with this connector we have two males so we need to put it into the female which is the negative on this side and the negative on this side and now we have these in parallel so now effectively our voltage is 22 0.8 times 2 whatever that is and then our amps are going to be 5.78 at the max times 2 because we have two sets in parallel and that's going to be about more or less 11.6 or around there so that's still under the 13 allowable amps that the delta max can take and it's well under the 100 volts that the delta max can take so from here if we were plugging it into the delta max or whatever again we only have one outlet here and one here and you're literally just going to plug the positive again into the red wire but again it's impossible to go incorrectly here and then you would plug the negatives into the black wires 
as we have here. And then this would go into the back of your Delta Max. So hopefully this video didn't confuse you and only helped you. Again, just remember in series, you're gonna be adding together the voltages. In parallel, you're gonna be adding together the currents. And yes, you can have multiple parallel strings. Like they do make these connectors that instead of two, they have three or four. So like we could literally plug like all four negatives into this and then come out here and then all four positives into that and then come out that way. But then again, that would be 5.8 basically amps times four, which is gonna be well over 20, which is gonna be higher than the 13 allowed amps of the Delta Max, which isn't gonna work. So you kind of need to just finagle based off what your system can take and handle in order to get the right configuration so that you know you can get the most bang for your buck. If you want to do four all in parallel and get 400 watts, you couldn't do it. If you want to do six all in parallel and get 600 watts, you couldn't do it. If you want to do six in series, you couldn't do it. But if you did three in series, three in series, and then those two in parallel, you can because it'd be three times 22.8 three times 22.8 for the voltage. That's the voltage stays the same. Once it goes in a parallel, then you just add together the currents and you'll be good to go. So that's pretty much why people will wire things in a mixture of series versus parallel and series and parallel instead of just all series or all parallel. Technically, if you can keep it all in series, it's going to be better or at least easier for you because once you start getting into multiple strings of parallel, you are supposed to be putting fuses technically on those strings, which I'm not gonna get into in this video, but then it gets a little bit more confusing with putting the right fuses and uh, things like that. So if you have any questions about this video, please let me know down below. I'll be happy to answer them. If you like this video, please be sure to like it and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this in the future. Thanks.